Hello again and welcome to another math tutorial. In this video we continue the topic of graphing quadratic functions. However, this time we're going to look at the functions written in what we call standard form, which is going to be a little bit different than vertex form. Now, when I say it's going to be a little bit different than vertex form, the most notable difference uh, I think is obvious. It's not written transformationally anymore. Um, we have all the terms of this quadratic function expanded out. So we can't just look at this and see, you know, where the vertex moves left or right, up and down. We can't see any of that. We do still have the A in front of the x squared is still going to be the stretch or shrink factor, reflect if it's negative, but the rest of that's going to be a little harder to determine as far as where to put the vertex, uh, where to begin plotting this parabola. Now there is a, a couple ways to do this, and one of the ways is to do what we call completing the square, which I'm not going to teach in this video. It's going to be taught later in the playlist, so if you're watching this and you comment and you want to say, hey, just complete the square on that and you've got it in vertex form, uh, yes, I know we can do that, we're just not going to do it in this video. Uh, there is a formula, however, for finding the vertex when the function is written like this, and that's what we're going to go over uh, primarily today. So the vertex of a quadratic function written in this form is given by this formula. Okay, so most importantly, the x coordinate is found using this ratio, uh, negative b, and the b is just the number we see here, divided by two times a, a is gonna be this number. So that gives us the value of the x coordinate of the vertex, all this says over here is just, this is just function notation. This is just telling you to evaluate the function at that number. So essentially, and you'll see it in the examples, we're gonna find this number, and then we're gonna plug it into the x's to find this number, okay? Now, just like in the last video, the line of symmetry is going to go through the vertex at the x coordinate. So line of symmetry is just negative b divided by 2a. The y-intercept is easy to find in this form, so it's so easy to find, it would be kind of criminal not to find it, so we're just gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, the y-intercept is the place where the graph of the parabola crosses the y-axis. It will cross the y-axis when the x value is zero. So if I put zero here and put zero here, those terms go away and leave me with just the c. So the y-intercept is the point zero c. And it's, it's a point on the graph, and you can find it by just looking at that constant term. And so, like I said, it's so easy to find, it would be a shame not to find it and not to use it. All right, let's do a couple of example problems, kind of running through this whole gamut, and then sketching the graph of the function as well. Directions are to find the vertex, the equation of the line of symmetry, and the y-intercept, and we're also going to graph the function. So... It's a whole lot to do. Uh, we're gonna begin, though, by finding the vertex. Um, so we're gonna begin with this formula, this x equals negative b over 2a formula. And so here, the b value is what we see in front of the x. So it's gonna be negative negative two divided by two times the a value and the a value is what we see in front of the x squared, which is one. So we've got negative negative, which is positive. We end up with two divided by two, which is one. So my vertex has an x coordinate of one. Now, to find the y coordinate, all we have to do is substitute that x value into the x's of the function. So to find this, we're gonna work out one squared minus two times one minus six. So that's one minus two minus six, which is negative seven. All right, so we've got the vertex. I know that this parabola is gonna start at the coordinate point one, negative seven, okay? Now, because we've done this work right here, we already have the line of symmetry. I'm gonna abbreviate that 
like so. Uh, line of symmetry is just x equals one. Essentially, that's what we found right here when we were finding half of that vertex point. And then we also wanna find the y-intercept. Let's write that over here since we're running out of room on the other side. The y-intercept is the point zero comma. And we look to our graph, find that number there. That's the y-coordinate, zero, negative six. So that point zero, negative six is on the graph. Okay. Now we can just complete the graph with our point pattern. One is one, two squares to four, three squares to nine. We know where we're starting right here. So one squares to one. Of course, the other negative one, one was in fact the y-intercept. Uh, two squares to four, three squares to nine, and that's our points. We can just draw this. And that's our graph of the function. Okay, same exact directions in this problem. Uh, we need to essentially graph the function, which requires us to find the vertex. Um, we don't really need the line of symmetry, but we're gonna go ahead and list it. We can certainly use the y-intercept. Um, so let's start with the negative b we're gonna start with our negative b divided by 2a formula. So here the b is four, so we're gonna have negative four divided by two times the a, which is two, which is negative four divided by four, which is negative one. So for our vertex point, x value is negative one the y value we need to find, and we're gonna find that by plugging negative one into the x's. Two times negative one squared, plus four times negative one minus three. Make sure you're being really careful and doing order of operations correctly, especially right here in this term, squaring first. So that's two times one. Uh, then four times negative one is negative four minus three. 2 times 1 is 2. These two numbers add to minus 7, and 2 minus 7 is negative 5. So we're going to start at negative 1, negative 5. Okay. Our line of symmetry is just x equals negative 1. Our y-intercept going to be the point zero comma negative three, which is right here. And then we're ready to go ahead and graph this. We can use our table of values, one squares to one, two squares to four in both positive and negative directions. So here we go, starting at the vertex. One squares to one, however, a value of two we're gonna take these values times two. So one really squares to two, which is where our y-intercept is supposed to be. Negative one also up to two. Two is gonna go up eight. So one, two, count up eight, both directions. Five points is enough, so we go ahead and connect them and make our parabola. And that's it. Next example, the directions are a little bit different here. Uh, we are still graphing the function, but we're asked for some other stuff that we haven't talked about yet with quadratic functions. Uh, determine the min max value, that's the minimum or maximum value. Also state the domain and range. And domain and range is something we've talked about previously uh, in this course, just not in this video yet. Uh, so let's begin with the graph of the function. So um, we're finding the vertex. You gotta know where to start, and then from there we can just do our x squared pattern in the direction that it needs to plot. So starting with the negative b divided by 2a formula, we're gonna go with negative, and then b is negative six, two times a, which is negative one, so that's going to be 6 divided by negative 2 or negative 3. So our vertex 
as an x of negative 3. And then the y coordinate, we're going to plug negative 3 in for all the x's. There's a lot of negative signs, so be careful writing this. That negative is part of the function, so negative. And then for the x, we're putting in negative 3 minus 6 times negative 3 minus 3. So here, order of operations, cannot do that. You have to do this first. So that's going to be uh, negative 9. These two negatives multiply to plus 18 and then minus 3. So negative 9 and 18 is 9. Minus 3 is 6. So we're going to start at the point negative 3, 6. Now, from there, we see the negative sign there, which is going to make the graph go down. It's going to make it reflect upside down. There is nothing else here that's going to stretch or shrink. So I'm just going to do my standard 1, 1 in both directions and 2, 4 in both directions. Uh, we can go ahead and pick up 3, 9 because we've got a lot of room here to graph, so might as well. Notice that just hit the y-axis at negative 3, which is where it should hit the y-axis. That makes me feel like I'm doing this all correctly. I've got enough points. Let's go ahead and make the graph. I'll start from up here. All right, so now we're ready to answer these questions. Determine the min or maximum value. So let's start right there. Now, this graph goes down and it never stops going down. It's going down forever. Because it continues to go down, it has no minimum value, okay? Um, because it just, it's just not stopping going down, so there's no, no bottom point on the graph, essentially. It does have, way up here, has a maximum value. The maximum value, we just find the vertex point and then just come over to the y-axis. Hits the y-axis right there at six, so this graph has a maximum value of six, okay? So it's just simply where the y-coordinate of the vertex is, okay? Next, let's do domain and range. Uh, now the domain, this is the easy one. It's kind of similar to how we did uh, absolute value earlier. This graph, as it goes down, is never going to stop going left. And as it goes down on this side, it's never gonna stop going right. The domain for every single quadratic function is always gonna be negative infinity to positive infinity. It's gonna be all real numbers, always. Okay, now the range Range of the y values. Reading from the bottom to the top, right? This is all kind of tied together in the min and maximum value stuff, which is why I wanted to include it here. This graph never stops going down. It has no bottom value, so its smallest y value is negative infinity. We have points all the way up to this point, the vertex, and then there are no more points beyond that. So our highest point on the graph, six, is where the y values or the range stop. And because that six is an actual point, that vertex is an actual point on the graph, we're gonna use a square bracket on that six. Okay, that's graphing this function, min and maximum value, domain and range. We're gonna practice one more of those. Okay, same directions. We're gonna start with the graph. Uh, so we need to find the vertex. So I'm gonna start with negative b over two a formula. The B is negative 12, and the A is 3, so that's going to be 12 divided by 6, which is 2. So my vertex is going to have an X coordinate of 2. For the Y coordinate, we're going to plug 2 in for the X's. We're going to work out 3 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 7. 2 squared is 4, so that's going to be 3 times 4 minus, and the 12 times 2 there is 24 plus 7, 
So we've got 12 minus 24 plus 7. Uh, these two numbers are negative 12 plus 7, and we've got it worked out to negative 5. All right, so we're going to start at the point 2, negative 5. Now, this graph has a vertical stretch factor times 3, so I'm going to take the y values times 3. So think our table of values, right? Normally we go 1, 1, but I have to take that vertical distance times 3, so we're going to go 1, 1, 2, 3, and in the negative direction as well. Uh, next is normally 2 squares to 4. We're going to take that Four, and we're going to take it times 3 to get 12. So 2 up 12, go all the way up to here. And then negative 2 up 12 to there. Notice we were supposed to cross the y-axis at 7, and sure enough, it does. So that's enough points for our graph. Let's go ahead and draw it. That could have been done a little bit better, but we get the idea. Uh, now, Min and maximum value. This graph has a bottom point. Because it has a bottom point, it has a minimum value. And the minimum value is the lowest point on the graph, which is right here at negative 5. Okay. Uh, domain and range. Domain, just like the last one, it's negative infinity to positive infinity because the graph keeps going uh, in, in both directions, left and right, as it goes up. Uh, the range, however, is a little bit different than the last one. Because this graph is opening up, it has a bottom point, not a top point like we saw in the last one. So I'm going to start my range at the lowest point on the graph, which is right here at the negative 5. And then it goes up without stopping. We say up without bound. Um, so it's going to keep going up all the way towards positive infinity. OK, that concludes the video on graphing quadratic functions in standard form. Um, and we did more than just graphing. We also talked about minimum, maximum value. We talked about domain and range, all things that we kind of left out of the first lesson in this playlist. Uh, but we picked them up here, and so now we've kind of got everything concerning these quadratic functions. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching this video all the way to the end as it helps support the channel. And uh, as always, I'll see you in the next video.